and it was on April Fool's Day. So I just, when he threw it all down to me, my first reaction was he was joking. Here, there, and every time I saw her on something, I just kept on telling myself, she's not training today. I think that Kayla helped teach me how to prepare well for this caliber of ass. Brittany, thanks a lot for taking time out uh, between your fight week. So how's it going there uh, with the last minute preparations? Um, everything's been going really well. Uh, I've actually had a pretty pleasant time in the bubble. Um, I've only been here a couple days. I didn't have to do the long quarantine. And um, yeah, I've had a pretty great experience. Nothing, nothing bad so far. Okay, so how was the camp for this fight, uh, according to, like, you've been part of a lot of camps in your career so far. So how was the camp for this particular fight? Oh, this camp was awesome. I, I had a ton of fun. Um, and I think because I had such a, a little break on that, or like such a long break, it was like, it was all new again. So I was having a lot of fun in camp. I wasn't like camp to camp to camp to camp to camp, back to back to back fight. So I, I laughed a lot. I enjoyed myself. I had about two bad days. <laughs> So, good camp. So, this, this was though. probably different, right? Like, training in between the pandemic. So, how how was that different for you? Can you ask that again? I guess I missed her. Uh, so, this might have been different for you, right? Training between the pandemic. So, how was that different for you? Um, yeah, I, 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 the thing was completely different because I moved to the East Coast and I started with a whole new team. Um, and then we were going on a very stylistic type fight. So um, it changed the way we took a, a view at this and the way we geared what, what our mission was like for the camp. Um, but I mean, a camp's a camp. Not a lot changes. Like you, you're going to go in there with a game plan, work it, uh, find your flaws in it, and then, you know, make corrections. So we just got straight to work. I guess I, guess I changed from going to grappling back to MMA. So I just really geared everything back to MMA and let go of sport jujitsu for now. Awesome. So how do you feel with only a few days left for the fight? You, do you have that Rocky Balboa feeling now? Oh, the Rocky Balboa feeling? I definitely feel very prepared. Um, I've had great mood, great, um, great time like with all the staff here at PFL. I've, I've not come into any... I did have one little hiccup where a cornerman changed um, at the last minute, but I think it's gonna, everything's going to be good. Um, I've been in great spirits. I still have one corner coming in um, from... Uh, out of state and as long as he gets in okay i think we're in a solid mentality ready to go in there and do work awesome so uh, could you just tell us like how the offer came to you and like what your first reaction was yeah um i work events uh i've transitioned into working um i'm a i'm a general manager of a event arena and we do a lot of sporting events fight events and stuff so i was actually working a, a floor at a uh, cage fight event and um we had just got the the crowd in and my phone lit up and it was the owner of pfl ray Sefo, and it was on april fool's day so i just when he threw it all down to me my first reaction was he was joking you know i thought it was a joke and i asked him like 10 times and then he assured me he wasn't and then when we hung up i even called him back again i was like are you sure you're not kidding and he's like no i'm not kidding and I think I started camp two days after we started to at least address camp, you know, like where are we going and what are we doing? So. Awesome. So you were someone that welcomed Kayla Harrison to PFL as well or MMA for that matter. So how different is that fight when compared to this one and how, what has changed in between this? Time? Well, Kayla Harrison is a completely different fighter than, and I think she's an incredible fighter. Um, I think she's, she's, you know, she was a, she was a grappler too. She, she knew, she knew a lot about grappling. Oh, wait, she knows a lot about grappling. She knows everything about grappling. Not really. You know what I mean? But she's good. And um, so we just, we were on the same there. And, you know, it's a completely different fight fighting Clarissa. I'm fighting a striker learning grappling. Um, I feel years ahead in, um, it's a completely different fight. You know, completely different game plan. Um, I feel very more prepared for Clarissa than I was for Kayla. And I probably should have been a lot more prepared for Kayla. So I just... I think that Kayla helped teach me how to prepare well for this caliber of athlete. And I went into this camp with a better, um, better game plan in general, not just versus Kayla, just how to take on this kind of, kind of magnitude of a camp, you know?
so following up, up on that game plan part will keeping the things keeping things on the ground will be your game plan and will you be looking for a submission when in this one i mean if a submission's there i'm going to take it i'm i'm not going to go and do myself at the service um but I, i'm not only looking for submissions i would like to cause some damage or cause something you know while on top that she would have to deal with or have to you know not if if the submission's there i'm going to take it but am I going to roll onto my back for some arm bar that might halfway be there? No, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do some damage um, over some kind of submission, just out of a hopeful submission. You know what I mean? I, I want to, I want to be as successful. So I'm going to look at the position I'm in and I'm not going to take it unless I know I have it. I'd rather, if I was in a good position, just do some damage instead. Awesome. So how do you prepare for an opponent for whom you don't have any footage of her striking or in the ground? So how how did you manage to bypass that issue? I think you got to start with a really good set of skills that are well rounded first, and be able to adjust. You know, um, you can look at everything you have to look at, like video or any of her past fights or boxing fights, how she stands, where she goes when she's hurt, where she goes when she's comfortable. And try to break all those things down, but there's a lot of unpredictable predictable moments in an MMA fight um, a lot of things can happen that you don't you can't plan for um, but that's something that I think is going to do me uh, me a service I've had more time in the cage of um, you know you can't make these things happen in um, sparring you can't simulate them and being able to have just experience on the grit that goes on in actualities in the moments um, I think is going to give me a little edge ahead um, and not figuring that out for the first time Awesome. So, has it bothered you that the major portion of the spotlight is on Clarissa? I mean, it's it's been wearing me like it's been oh, it's been making me like it's like grated cheese. That's why I keep on saying it's like just grating at me. Um, um, it's gnawing at me. Uh, it doesn't bother me that she's getting a bunch of attention and a bunch of things. What the things that bother me is they're just like oh, fuck Brittany. You know what I mean? It's like it kind of just a pass by, but no. I'm not, I, it actually gave me a lot of opportunity to train um, and not have to, like, I think she was taken around for all the commercials. She was brought here, there. And every time I saw her on something, I just kept on telling myself, she's not training today. She's she's getting on the PFL, getting all gloated up and pretty. Like, I'm going to be in the gym training and we'll do that in the bubble. And I, that's kind of how I planned this whole camp. I wanted to kind of, I did a couple small interviews on nighttime after training, but I planned on doing most of my media and everything like that while I was locked in here after all the training's done. So I think it did me, uh, it did me good. Good for her. She got a bunch of attention. Okay. So a couple of questions more. So firstly, uh, the, there has been a lot of debates about boxers coming to MMA and not a lot of them have fared well. So do you see this uh, fight as an extension of those debates? And do you see yourself as a representative of the MMA community? I hope she doesn't fare well. I mean, that's we have to hope that I that it doesn't go good for her. I just really fucking hope so. Um, but I mean, yeah, I don't think it will. I mean, I want, that's what I'm going to go in there thinking. Um, she she seems to think that she she's the quote of all, all of it, and uh, I let I kind of let her have that inflated personality and figure some stuff out in there. Um, I'm not a training partner. I'm going to fight her like. An opponent and sometimes training partners can give you a false sense of reality not you know damning you so i i don't know i i hope that it doesn't go good at all <laughs> for her so we are seeing a lot of ma also boxing debates currently so do you think more boxers should step into the ring or for the jiu-jitsu match for that matter I think if you have a quest to go seek out some personal thing, you should do it. Um, you know, once you're a professional athlete, you can't just all of a sudden start an amateur. So I think you should do yourself a service and definitely go through and the experiences of training um, to make sure that you are prepared. Because if you're going into the pros, I learned, you know, I, w- I turned pro, I think back in 2016 or 2000, I can't remember, 2011, I don't know. But when I went pro, um, you know, there's no turning back. And sometimes these boxers that are already professional, they have to start there. And that's a, that's quite a bit behind in the experience you gain in the cage and amateur. So I do, I do tell anybody to follow any quest that they have after, but just get prepared and, and, uh, unprepared woman is prepared to fail. Awesome. So what do you think of win against Clarissa will do for your future in general? 
I mean, for my future in general, man, doesn't this leave a cool little legacy, Mark? Um, I, I get to write my diary about it. Um, I don't know what the stars will align next, um, but um, I'm definitely proud um, and proud to tell my son about it, proud to tell anything, you know, it's just a, it's a notable time and I'm trying to like live in the moment because it's an honor to be the, the extreme grappler in this fight. So it's, I think it's going to be talked about for a while. Um, it's all I can fucking talk about. And, uh, um, I just, I, yeah, I'm happy about it. It's very, very cool. Awesome. So lastly, what's the message that you have the fans, uh, about the fight? What do I have to say to the fans about the fight? Um, I think you're going to be watching a very exciting match. I think the first round is going to be, wow. I, I just see it in my brain and daydreams and all the dreams when I sleep is just going to be like, oh my God. And then we're going to go into the second. I do believe that the wear and tear I put um, in the grit, um, I will recover faster and be able to, I want to have an end in the second round. You know, um, I just am been in enough fights to know sometimes it doesn't just get over in the first round. You got to go into a little deeper water. Sometimes an athlete on the calibers that we both are. So I'm, I'm prepared for three, but I want to stop it in the second. Awesome. So uh, Brittany, thanks a lot for taking time out once again and all the best for your fight. Looking forward to seeing you in action. Thank you so much for having me on. Have a Thank great you. night.